Interface Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and the Frankie Smith Funeral Home. Hello friends and welcome to Fairfield Today. I'm your host Paul Jasson. Thank you for joining us. Uh, looking forward to a good first segment today. I'm going to get right to it because I'm excited about uh, I think one of the real kind of gems in Fairfield County that uh, isn't always that well known. We hear about it periodically but it, I, I think a lot of people don't go out there with any regularity or have aware what goes on at the Fairfield County Airport. So we want to kind of bring that to the front now and talk about it. Plus, they're having their big celebration, uh, 50 years of the Fairfield County Airport. Rick Sabrak, who, uh, who has a real job with uh, economic <laughs> development in Fairfield County, but this is sort of in line with that. Uh, Rick is also a board member out at the airport, uh, but uh, uh, it's an exciting time for the airport out there. And from an economic development standpoint, what a plus it is to have a, a place like this right here in Lancaster. I tell you what, it really is, and one of the great things, if you look at the airport, is just its proximity to Columbus and the ability for, for corporate jets to be able to fly in here and not deal with the hassle that you get up at, at John Glenn or Rickenbacker, and you can be in downtown 30 minutes from our airport. Uh, but it's also a plus for local companies like Gorsuch, uh, Fairfield Homes, you know, they have a, they have a hangar there. Uh, Company Wrench has a plane there. Uh, there's some companies up in uh, Canal Winchester and Pickerington that have planes there. And it makes it uh, really convenient for these companies to be able to do business. It's uh, May 18th, yep. uh, this Saturday, and it'll occur, what, from 8 to 3? 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. The bulk okay. of the stuff will really be happening between, uh, I'd say, 10 and 2. A lot of the planes that will be flying in between 9 and 10. And that's going to be a really it, it's cool It's always so much fun, even if you're not there, just to be anywhere near because you see these planes coming in. It's a, it's a real eye-opening moment. It really is. I think a lot of people, uh, like, they remember we have an airport when they're driving on 33 and all of a sudden they see a low plane coming through <laughs> and they're like, what's going on? Uh, like, oh, yeah, there's an airport right here. Yeah, so, and and I, I think the very cool thing as a veteran, I think the very cool thing, you're going to be honoring uh, veterans and armed forces members here and you got a very special guest speaker. Yeah, I'm excited. Uh, Colonel Tom Moe, who really kind of rose to prominence here when John McCain was running for president, right. and uh, he went along with them on his tour, and Colonel Moe was, uh, you know, prisoner of war in Vietnam with, uh, you know, with John McCain. And the, the really exciting thing, because I think a lot of people have heard him speak before, but last year, Colonel Moe went back to Vietnam for the first time since he was a captive there. So he's going to come and speak to us about that, I'm sure, amazingly emotional experience of going back mm -hmm. to, to Vietnam for the first time after, uh, you know, after uh, being a prisoner of war there. So we're really excited about that. That'll take place at noon. And you, you think, just for that for a second, uh, I've known a lot of Vietnam era guys, my, my era that we're in, and uh, of course, very few have ever had or would want the opportunity, but very few have had the opportunity to go back but especially with what he went through there. I mean, it was something just to be there. You deserve uh, kudos for just being there, but then to have been in there at the Hanoi Hilton like Tom was, uh, that'll be a great moment. It will, it will. And, and the whole, you know, we're not going to do a whole lot of, um, you know, speaking time. People are there to see airplanes and, and do other things, but, uh, but we feel it's important to remember, you know, um, the military, and this is a great way to do that. Um, we're going to have, it's, it's going to be pretty cool. We've got a you know, national anthem, and during that, we're going to have a paratrooper flying down with the American flag as, uh, as that happens. So that's going to be the opening uh, leading into Colonel Moe's uh, speech. Wow. Uh, and, and again, this is all about honoring Armed Forces members. Colonel Tom Moe will be the keynote speaker. But then, as you say, you're going to have a, a drop in there with the flag at that moment coming in. But you're also lots of other things, military aircraft. Uh, you're going to have some vintage aircraft coming in. Historical people will be involved in this. Yeah. Uh, everything out there is going to be in play. Yeah, it's, uh, you know, just coming out and looking at the old planes, I think is going to be a really exciting thing for, for people. We haven't um, done that for a while out there, have we? Yeah, so they used to do air shows. Right. Uh, Full-blown air shows where you're doing tricks in the sky and all sure. that type of stuff. Sure. Uh, 
those were really expensive to yes. put on yes. and a big risk because if you have bad weather, oh. you've just, it's, it's a big it's and There a were big, big 52. Yeah. I mean, there were big moments of planes coming in, Tuskegee kind of moments. And, well, we're going to actually, I'm glad you mentioned that. Tuskegee Airmen will, uh, will be there represented, uh, not flying, but uh, they have sure. a, an antique car that they're going to have, and they'll be there to speak to, to guests that come. Uh, we're going to have um, you know, an antique biplane. We're going to have a B-25 that will fly in. Wow. And uh, wow. people have the opportunity to, to pay. It's not, it's not inexpensive, but uh, yes. they'll have a chance yeah. to fly in that if, they, nice. if they'd like. And you'll be seeing that flying in around 9 o'clock. And uh, around 11 o'clock, it'll be uh, taking passengers out for a flight. So you'll get to see it fly, take off and land. And I think that's going to – I'm excited about that personally. Um, yeah, the, the antique biplane for, for 80 bucks you can fly. And uh, I think there's like 10 left in the world. Uh, like this, so just a lot of cool, cool moments, um, and it's gonna be cool for kids. There's we're gonna have kids activities, the Big Brothers Big Sisters, uh, the Fairfield County Library will be there uh, doing you know arts and crafts and little little fun things for kids to do, and for children ages eight to seventeen, they have a chance to fly for free as part of the Young Eagles program. So nice. you get a chance to to look down and see Fairfield County and Lancaster from a different angle, a bird's eye view. Food, food opportunities too? Yeah, there will be uh, food trucks. Uh, we have local food trucks, Bob's Backyard Barbecue, Sophie's Pierogi, Wood-Fired Pizza. Nice. Uh, we'll have Gypsy Joe's Ice Cream there. So they'll all be there represented along with uh, the Historical Aircraft Squadron, which is, you know, I think a forgotten, you know, museum that we have right. here in Fairfield right. County. Chance for people to see that. Uh, and they'll serve breakfast and lunch there also with uh, with all money going toward uh, helping with, with new attractions at that museum. Speaking with Rick Sabrak, Rick, uh, whose uh, real full-time job is economic development with Fairfield County, but kind of hand-in-hand hand with that. It's also on the board of the Fairfield County Airport out there. And I, I'll give a quick plug here. Uh, of course, before it was the Fairfield County Airport, which has been that way now, which we're celebrating 50 years, 50 years. it was the Anchor Hawking Airport. Mm -hmm. And back in... I'm going to go with 1947 or 48, uh, my wife's sister, uh, who had graduated from Lancaster High School and worked at Anchor Hawking, was Miss Fairfield County Airport. Oh, wow. That was a big deal every year. <laughs> and even then, it was a big deal. Uh, Georgia Kane was her name, and she was that. So this has a long and rich history even prior to the 50 years since the counties took it over. Of course, back then it was much smaller. Anchor was just about it. It was the company here. Nobody had a plane, but Anchor Hawking, you know, there wasn't that much. But now you've indicated the uh, company Wrench and Gorsuch and Anchor Hawking. Uh, it's really used a lot out there for economic development stories and situations. Yeah, it really is. And, and just, you know, I think it's still an untapped resource. There's definitely a lot of opportunities, but... Uh, you know, we're full as far as the hangars go. I mean, this is the first nice. time in years. So uh, a lot of people think it's just for hobbyists, and, and it is nice to have uh, to have that opportunity for, for hobbyists to have planes here. Uh, but there's, uh, there's a lot of uh, a good opportunity for, for businesses that are, that are needed. And that's great that you mentioned Anchor Hawking. They actually uh, have, uh, for free, they made uh, special limited edition glasses oh. for this uh, airport 50th anniversary. So you'll have an opportunity to purchase those glasses. Uh, we'll have them finished in time, and uh, we'll have those for sale um, at the uh, at the airport. And the hope is that we'll be able to use that money to put towards a future event and possibly make this an annual event. Um, you know, to, to not as big as as the air shows, but really a community event that will highlight a few different cool airplanes. Chance for people to uh, to take take flights. Uh, there will also be a discovery flights there, which is an opportunity for people to basically take their first flying lesson, flying lesson oh. uh, for about $100. So uh, lots of cool things, and, and hopefully this will get a chance to, to uh, become an annual event for us. FairfieldCountyAirport.com is the uh, website. You can look all that information up, and it, and it gets part of the county, and, and Fairfield County is deeply involved in this. Uh, the county offices, everybody in the county has a part in this, of course. Uh, it's uh, this Saturday from 8 to 3 out at, out at the airport, and I will say this, that when I got out of the Army, uh, we, we had money we were allowed to take out for, for whatever we wanted to use. I used it for college, but my friend took flying lessons. He was from Pickerington, lived down here now. 
we got drafted together, got out about the same time, and he took flying lessons, and he learned to fly out here at the Fairfield County Airport. Of course, then it was the Fairfield County Airport. This was back in the 70s or something. And I can remember going up, and I'd never been in a small plane. I'd never been in a jet until the Army, and I'd never been in a small plane. So he took me up a few times as he was flying around. That's remarkable to see Fairfield County from, from, a, from an angle like that, you're very close to everything. It's not like being in a jet. You're right there. You sort of see how things are laid out. Uh, for people to have the opportunity to do that, I would encourage that because I know you've done it, and a lot of people have done it. Uh, Glenn Burns, they've had planes. Dave Scheffler, they've had planes. My, my friend Brian Boltz, they had planes out there, and they fly. But if you have an opportunity even to go up for one flight, it's, it's interesting. You know, and there's going to be some reasonably cost flights out there. Uh, you know, we've the helicopters ride will be forty or fifty dollars, and Boy. even just to look down at the uh, the fairgrounds, even I think that was my favorite part when I went up in a helicopter for the first time and looked down and saw just the fairgrounds from above, and it was just the mountain really right cool. there. I yeah. mean, it's 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 really something. Yeah, and it's it's you know you get this opportunity every day, and. Uh, you know, so I think just being able to go out there and, and seeing, you know, there's, it's going to be a fly-in, so you're going to have planes flying in from all over the state, not just antique, but just regular airplanes. And to see that amount of activity, we, we average 40 landings and takeoffs a day at the airport, which I think would surprise people. 40 to it's, 50 a day? Yeah. Really? Uh, but, you know, that day, there's going to be a whole lot more than that. You know, we'll be in the hundreds. Yeah. And, yeah. and just to be able to look up and see these different planes coming in and out, I think it's going to be pretty exciting. Well, again, it's uh, this Saturday from 8 to 3 out at the, uh, out at the Fairfield County Airport. 50 year, 50th anniversary of the Fairfield County Airport, 8 to 3. Military aircraft, uh, vintage aircraft. Uh, there will be airplane rides available, helicopter rides available. Nice. Uh, it'll be a classic car show. I don't think There'll we mentioned that. There'll be some classic that. cars there. Yeah, cars and out please there. come on out. If you have a classic car, yeah. you'll get your own uh, special parking area. So nice. Please uh, come on out and bring out your car. And, uh, and of course, uh, there's no charge to go. Just an event to get out there. And it's uh, we all know how we get out there. There's one way in and there's one way out. Yep, we know yep, how to get yep. there. So patience will be important, but uh, we'll have the Fairfield County uh, Sheriff's Department out there yeah. to help with traffic. Well, we, so. we hope it's a great crowd out there. We hope for a day like this when it's just comfortable and nice out there. That's You can control a lot of things, Rick, but even cloud control or crowd control may not be up your alley right at that yeah, moment. Yeah, I can't. I can't control the clouds or the crowds. <laughs> uh, and. You know, and maybe maybe there will be a chance for you to come and uh, match your uh, your sister in law and become Mister Fairfield County. Well, Airport. I don't think there's very <laughs> very little chance of that anyway, Rick. Anyway, Rick Sabrak with Fairfield County Airport, who's talked about 50th anniversary this Saturday, eight to three, uh, out at the Fairfield County Airport. Again, just go out. You can find more information FairfieldCountyAirport.com. Good, good website, very interactive. You can find out lots of stuff about it, but stuff for the whole family, uh, a, a partial day, a full day out there. There's something everybody, Colonel Tom, Mo, is that noon That's when the noon. actual yes. program will be? Yeah. So early on, there'll be a program there, and, and, and most everyone's heard Tom speak, and it, it'll be a wonderful thing talking about perhaps his uh, return to Vietnam and the things he experienced there. So he's a wonderful speaker. So it's just going to be a great day at the Fairfield County Airport. Rick, thank you very much. Thank Looking you. forward to it. It'll be a great day. Appreciate it. Thank you for your service. Man. Thank you. We'll be back on Fairfield today. The Frank E. Smith Funeral Home and Crematory in Lancaster and the Johnson Smith Funeral Home in Baltimore have a long and wonderful history of serving our community. Feel free to give us a call at 740-653-0652. Stop in and see us at either of our two locations, 405 North Columbus Street in Lancaster or 207 South Main Street in Baltimore. Respect for tradition, regard for change. Welcome back to Fairfield Today. I'm Paul Jasson. Thank you for joining us. And I want to thank Rick Sabrak coming in and talking about the Fairfield County Airport and the big event they've got coming up. And... Uh, it, it, it is almost like every weekend here in Lancaster and Fairfield County, there are so many events going on. There's, there's so much to talk about. It's hard to get them all on uh, when you only do a half hour show uh, in a week. But one of them also coming up this Saturday is the Kids and Cop Day. And, and this has been a, it's turned into a really big event. The, the fourth annual one is coming up. Uh, pleasure to have with us for a return visit, Deb Probasco. 
past president, and I wrote this down, Deb, I'm going to try to get this right, Lancaster Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association. Correct. Am I close? You got Excellent. it. Excellent. And also Chuck Sims from the Lancaster Police Department here to represent those fine folks. Thank, first of all, thank you for joining us today, and we appreciate it. Thank uh, you this, for having us. Yeah, this Kids and Cop Day, this is a, it's a big deal. It's turned into a big deal. It sure has. It grows every year. Yeah, yeah. And it's going to be this Saturday from 10 to 2 out at Ohio University, Lancaster. Rain or shine, I think that's important to know here. Yes. Uh, the, the rain will not deter it's out there. And Chuck, tell us what's uh, what's going to be going on out there. What what can anybody that goes out there that maybe this is their first year, what will they be seeing? Yeah, I, I think we're expecting about 1,500 kids. Wow. Paul. So wow, a that's lot a of big kids, event. A lot of kids, and, and the whole goal is to, to bridge that gap between law enforcement and our, our kids and our and, public And that's, peers. I guess that's an ongoing, you, you probably try to do that every hour of your day to try to make it just, I guess, make you guys more, yeah. not that you're not people friendly, but just try to bring yeah, kids just, into that. We don't want to see, uh, we don't want children to see us just in bad situations. Right. Good situations too. We're here to help. Um, and, and have fun just like they are. Yeah. We're, we're big kids ourselves. You know, and I can remember being a kid, of course, I grew up here, and, and there were always, they were what we called beat cops, I guess we'd think about them. Then they walked downtown, they were around, not out in the neighborhoods where I live, but you'd see them downtown, and they were very approachable. I mean, yes. you could go up and talk to them as a kid, you were kind of intimidated by them. They're in a uniform, they, and you're a little guy, and they're much taller than you. But uh, they were always very friendly, and I, I, I guess that's all part of this, is just trying to, if you need a cop, don't be scared. Yes. I mean, th these are your friends. Yes, right. we're, we're there to help, and, that, and that's the message that we want to convey, for sure. And, and tell us a little bit about this uh, Citizens Police Academy. This has been going on for, I don't know how long, 10 years? I'm not sure. Uh, the first set of classes Seven, eight was years ago. in Prior to my 2000. Time. Oh. <laughs> Six, maybe. Okay, so it's been a while. It's been even longer than that. Yeah, it's been a yes. while. And uh, and again, this is all part of that trying to uh, get civilians involved. Tell us what they do. Uh, now that you mention it, in the fall we have upcoming classes. Okay. okay. Um, anyone can come into the classes. Uh, you can get a sign-up sheet at the police department. And they'll, of course, do a background check. Um, the classes are nine weeks long once a week. Um, you basically learn what it is the police officers do sure. on a daily basis um, and what they go through. I, they I go only want to know a little bit about what they go through. I don't really want to know what they go through because it's way over my pay grade, I can tell you that. You guys every day step out there and it's uh, pretty exciting challenge every day. When, when people talk about, well, when I go to work, I don't know what I'm going to do every day. I don't know that there's many more jobs like yours that would be more truthful in that line. Your job every day, I'm sure you've never seen two days alike. Yeah, it's it's different every single even day. Even in a and town like Lancaster. Yes, even in small towns, you know, uh, it, it doesn't really matter if it's a city of a million people or a city yeah. of 40,000 sure. people. It's, sure. it's different every single day. And that's, we just, uh, this program with um, the LCPAA, they, um, we're able to show them kind of what what happens on a daily basis, and they get a little little taste of that. And and I'm telling you, by the end of it, people's eyes are really open to, oh, to what goes on out there in, in a small city like this. And um, it's a great program, though. It's a nine week, like uh, Debbie said, it's a nine week program, class once a week, and it, we go through everything. We take them on our firing range, we take them through traffic stop classes, investigation classes. And uh, they really, it's, it's a really cool program, and I think they really enjoy I it. I can see and the eyes that light up. Oh, yeah. Oh, and yeah. the support, the support we get from that organization, the police department, is unbelievable. And I, those people come in and volunteer so much time for us and to help us get this message across that yeah. we're out there to help people. Yeah. It, it's amazing. So. So, so, Deb, this is Kids and Cop Day. It's this uh, Saturday, rain or shine out there. Tell us what, what we're Anybody going out there, and as Chuck indicated, a large number of kids going out there, a lot of parents, what, what will they be seeing out there? There'll be uh, approximately 35 agencies there, um, anywhere from SWAT, EMA, there'll be helicopters, mm. motorcycles, uh, Med Flight is new this year. Uh, new this year, we have a DJ, oh, Michael yeah, I Ashton. Saw that. Yeah, I saw that, yeah. He will be there DJing. Uh, big Brothers and Big Sisters will be there. Uh, that's new this year. Colombo Law joined us last year, mm -hmm. and they set up a booth and pass out bicycle helmets. Nice. So, nice. 
They actually fit you. Yeah. They actually oh, fit the I guess that's important, the isn't it? It's not just a helmet. Yes. It's your helmet. Yeah, it's your, your helmet. helmet fitted for you. Uh, Columbia Wall does a great job with it. They have a whole truck and trailer that they bring along with them. With really dedicated helmets. to this. Yeah. yeah. Right. Uh, really cool. And, and I suppose that's in a community like this, uh, that's really what you see is a community like this and an event like this steps up. I mean, like you mentioned, all the agencies, all the people out there, uh, there's no lack of people that are willing to be involved in this and help. Right. It's, it's a lot of fun. The kids have a blast. It's exciting when the helicopters come in. This oh. year, I think we're expecting, weather permitting, sure. quite a few choppers it's to nice. come in. Well, that's a good location out there. Big, big open area like that. Yeah. yeah. So you, we're, you, we're expecting three helicopters for sure that are going to be there this I'm year. I'm excited at this yeah. age to even see <laughs> helicopters. I mean, that's oh, and big. The, between helicopters and the police departments and the SWAT teams and ODNR has a, a like a bow shooting yeah. uh, event thing that they the have set up on do. a trailer. It's 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 incredible. Now, now uh, do kids need to register, pre-register for this, or is it just show up and you're in? Just show, show up, up and you're in. Yeah. I don't know where else you could go to see 35 different agencies have something set up with free food, uh, you know, free hot dogs, popcorn, Weldon's ice creams there. It helps out. Oh, I mean, it. I don't know where else you're going to find that. Free, free. giveaways. Free giveaways. Yeah. Every kid gets a goodie bag. There's T-shirts. It's, it's a really good event. And it's only four hours. I mean, that's a lot packed in in four hours. If you show up there at 10 o'clock to get involved, you're going to be busy for four hours. There's exactly. something there for the whole time. Oh, right. yeah. Pleasant Township, they come in with their smoke trailer, uh, do a little educating with nice. the parents and the kids. Nice. So it's, uh, gee, it's a fun event. And now, has this grown every year? You expect 15. Is that up from last year? Or is that yeah, you know, where you think it'll be? I think it slightly grows every year. Yeah. Really. Like last it. year, I think we hit like 1,200. I was looking at some, you mentioned some of the agencies, the LPD. Uh, fire Department, Pleasant Township, Highway Patrol, ODNR, EMA, Sheriff's Office, Fairfield Medical Center Police will be there, Aravac, Colombo Law, and those are just a few of the things. So oh, yeah. if you're a parent that, that really want to educate your child, and this is something that probably could be a lifelong learning experience, the things you learn here just in four hours you hope will stick with these kids for ages. Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah, exactly. We, we want this experience not only to educate, children and some of the things that, that happen with these agencies but like I said to make that connection that we are there to help and here's how we can help you these are the things that we do to help you uh, and that that's what all these agencies bring to the table it's 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 unbelievable unbelievable to have this kind of participation yeah. from these departments too you know because we don't make money from any of this sure, we're not here sure. to make money we're, we're here to, to help out yeah, strictly so, yeah. PR yeah, and for, get kids 35 Pro. agencies yeah. to yeah. jump in on that. Yeah, you just don't and see everything's that. everything's free. Yeah, you don't, you don't see that. These people, on a Saturday, yeah. Yeah. Like, yeah. nobody's getting paid to do this. Everybody's out there just doing it on their own. Yeah. We're all volunteering. Now, from the from your uh, Citizens Police Academy thing, uh, how do people get involved in that? Uh, you've told about, when, when is it, the fall? You yes. said it was coming up. How would people, if they have an interest in this, to find more information? Well, they could go to the website. Um, they can get to the alumni website, I believe, through the police department's yeah. page. Okay, yeah. just go on the police yeah, department website and find that. Yeah. Sure. Um, also, on Facebook, um, if you go to Lancaster Citizens Police Academy Alumni Association, okay. um, you'll find Kids and Cops Day, Shop with a Cop, all of that right there on Facebook. It'll yeah. have pictures of everything we've done in the past. Um, the I've website. been there. Look at it on Facebook. There's a lot there. I mean, the, the social media. You got a lot going on there. You can find out a lot right there. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Exactly. Social media. That's. I mean, that's the way most people sure. go about it. If not, go to the website though. Um, go to the Lancaster, the Lancaster Police Department website, and then you can get to the link to the LCPAAA's website, which will have a registration form oh. um, that we're going to get on there, and we'll start okay. taking that once we set the dates. We have not set the dates. It'll start probably sometime in September, though. Okay. Uh, the classes, and like you said, it's a nine-week stretch of classes, uh, usually on a Thursday. I feel like a Thursday or yeah. a Tuesday okay. evening from 6 to 9. So okay. it's three hours each night that we do that. And like I said, though, it, it you will not be... It's going to uh, be life-changing. You will not be bored, I promise uh, you that. It sounds like it will be so much fun. How many people are in a class? I mean, do you try to limit it to a certain number? Yeah, we try to keep it um, below 20. 
uh, just because that's a lot of yeah. a lot of people. But we try to keep it above ten, so we're looking for that ten to twenty range. Sweet spot in there where yeah. you've got enough people each of you to have yes. have people right. to do yeah, that. Because we bring in, I mean, detectives come in in the evening to teach these classes. Uh, narcotics detectives do come in and teach their portion. Nice. City law director's office jumps in and helps us out with the legal portion. So we have to get people lined up for this. So we want sure. to make sure we have enough there. Sure. Always fun, huh? Oh, you, it's, you've been it's through a, a couple blast. of these. Well, you take a class once, then you can join the Citizens Police Academy, and then what we do is we support the police department. If they need help with an event, uh, Kids and Cops isn't the only thing we do. We do shop with a cop, we do award ceremony, promotion ceremonies. Um, retirements. Retirements from the police department. Anything they need. Well, let's, let's hit back to this Kids and Cop Day. Got Deb Probasco and Officer Chuck Sims with us here. And it's uh, this Saturday out at Ohio University, rain or shine, 10 to 2. Um, helicopters, air evac, SWAT vehicles, patrol cars, motorcycles, smokehouse, much more. And lots of events. Bring the kids. There's a lot of giveaways, a lot of food, uh, a tremendous learning opportunity for young people to get involved with, with the Lancaster Police and with, with law enforcement in general. Let's see what's going on. It's going to be a great day. 1,500 kids may be out there. You don't have to sign up ahead of time. Roll out there. Be there at 10 o'clock. It's going to be a full day. They have a tremendous amount of events. So, uh, gosh, thanks for what you do for the community. It's, a, oh, it's going to be a fun time for the adults and for the kids. Well, great experience. And there's a lot of local businesses that help us to yep. make this event free. Uh, and, and it'll all be out there. So a great opportunity to go out there 10 to 2 this Saturday at Ohio University. Lancaster. So good luck. We hope for a beautiful day like this out there today. That's one thing we hope for right there. Yes, we do. Yeah, rain or shine, though, it's yeah. going to be going on. It's okay? going to happen regardless. We'd That's like right. to shine instead. So. Kids and Cop Day out at Ohio University, Lancaster. And uh, don't go away. We're going to have a bonus segment coming up just in a moment. We are back on Fairfield today, and again, there's so much going on that we can't get it all in in two segments. We've actually uh, a bonus segment, three segments. Uh, a couple of ladies we've had on before with Meals on Wheels, um, uh, Executive Director Anna Tobin on my far right, and Chris Moody, who is uh, a board member with Meals on Wheels, and they've uh, given us a couple moments of their valuable time to come in here and talk about another event coming up. Gosh, in just a couple of days, the uh, just the grand opening of Meals on Wheels. Anna, this is a a moment you've been uh, kind of pushing for and looking forward to for a while. Oh yeah, you know we started back in 2017 with the purchase of the building, the Cedar Heights Elementary School building, and renovations started about, uh, what would you say, last year? Last, last year. year about this mm -hmm. time, just getting the plans into place. Mm -hmm. And it's taken a while to get us there. We moved uh, mid-March. And so we are now in and operating and uh, doing our thing. For those that don't know, it's the uh, the old Cedar Heights School. As you go up on Cedar Hill Road, you sort of head out before you hit St. Mark's. It'll be on your right right there, past the church, past some of the uh, buildings right there. And it's where the old Cedar Heights School was when I was a kid. Cedar right. Heights School was up there. And uh, big transformation inside it's there. It's a huge transformation. We've made it just so user accessible for our seniors. Uh, as from the time you open the front doors to enter, it's just all geared towards the seniors. We have a great reception area that's just welcoming. Uh, you come on into the main corridor, and just off of the main corridor is our dining room, uh, which is set up more restaurant style. So if you've been into our old facility over on the Olivedale Senior Campus there, uh, it was more like a cafeteria, like mm -hmm. you would see in a school. Right. The tables were all lined up. But the, the dining area now has nice color to it. Um, the tables are all set in twos and fours, so you can either sit Very as Very welcoming. Fours. Very yeah. welcoming. Yes. You can push yes. tables together, um, but it just feels like a restaurant. There's a coffee bar. There's a service area where seniors who are still able to serve themselves can go through the service line and get their own meal, or they can sit down and be served by our wait staff. And so it's just a, a, a very uh, welcoming, a very, um, what do I want to say, accommodating okay. uh, place to come. Uh, the front side of the building that faces Cedar Hill Road is activity areas, and we're still working on that. That sure. was not a, included in uh, the entire project, so we continue to work on those activity rooms and getting them ready. We have an Eagle Scout who's stepped up, and he's doing our library for us. Nice That's project. his project. Nice project. Uh, our computer lab still needs work to be done on it, but we will have a computer lab. And then we have two activity rooms available for our seniors, whether they play cards, do crafts, or do physical activity. Those activity rooms will be available. And so the back side of the building that faces the playground area, that's all our nutrition wing. 
So all the magic happens back there where we're cooking those meals, getting them out the door. It's the volunteer packing area and the large food storage warehouse. So the building's laid out very in sections where, you know, if you're in the nutrition wing, you are in the nutrition wing. If you're in the senior services side, you're definitely in the senior service side, keeping keeping our seniors from being included in part of the production. I got you. As they were in the past. <laughs> yeah. You used to come in the back door well, meals I, on meals. I, I remember how that happened. You're how just that right was. in the production. Now, Chris, this this uh, Friday then it's it's a big yes. time. You got a got a ribbon cutting around uh, six o'clock, I think, but things start at five thirty. Tell us about the evening. We are so excited and we would love to just welcome all of you to please come and celebrate this evening with us. Um, we do have ribbon cutting with Lancaster Chamber of Commerce at six o'clock and then we'll have hors d'oeuvres and we're celebrating. So we'll have a little champagne um, there that evening and we'll allow you to go through the facility and see these wonderful changes that have occurred. Um, it's such an inviting building now. Um, it's very easy to maneuver through. Um, so um, folks that have um, walkers, easy to move through there. Um, it, it's, we're so proud of what we've done with this facility. And, and it's such an asset for the city of Lancaster, um, for our seniors um, to, to have this place um, to come. and. And a lot of folks, this is their socialization, so it's a great t uh, facility for that, that they can come and just enjoy one another's company. And I understand you, you've been able to work it out with Deb Connell and the Lancaster Festival. You have a little festival orchestra, um, a, little, a little shindig going on we there from 5.30 to 8, things happening. We do. Um, that This particular weekend is the festival's uh, little preview of things to come this summer. So. Um, I spoke with Deb, and I have four musicians nice. from the festival coming, nice. and um, they'll play some jazzy music for us, so it'll be very upbeat. Um, we're super excited about it. Hope it's you all can come. 1515 Cedar Hill Road, again, the old Cedar Heights School yes. out there, 530 to 8 this Friday evening. Uh, ribbon cutting with the chamber and, and, and the whole deal is going on at 6 o'clock. And, and again, Anna, some of the numbers that you serve and I'll, I forget them now but I'm sure you know them they're uh, really staggering with they, the services you perform. They are we're up to preparing about 900 meals a day at this point and you know you, you've heard us over the years that number just keeps going up and up as the senior population continues, continues to grow. We serve about 2,400 seniors annually uh, in all, all of our programs so the need is there and we're just so grateful to the community for stepping up to the plate and helping us achieve this dream where we have the facility that we can yes. uh, serve the number of seniors that require our services. And you were speaking with uh, Shirley Wasson earlier, yes, with yes. The, earlier in the week, yeah. uh, but she was talking about how she just put out the ask to people. She said, I really didn't do a whole lot, but I just asked people and people would step up and make things happen for her and they accomplished a dream themselves. And I just have to say to our community, and the reason for this grand opening too, yes. is to thank the community. Uh, because without them, this would not have happened. It was just that same case. We reached out, we asked, we need, and people just show up. We say we have a library. The library shows up with you know books that they're retiring mm -hmm. to stock our library. And so just things like that happen over and over. And, and just to be in this community and have the blessing of the community that supports individuals at all levels is just amazing. And we are just so grateful and we want to celebrate. Yes, and we are going to celebrate. And, and Chris, you, you see that, you, you work here, this is your full-time job here at Driftville mm -hmm. Federal, but also a board member with Meals on Wheels. But you see this over and over, not not only at Meals on Wheels, but you were saying the Lancaster Campground and uh, Maywood Mission and wherever it is, when, they, when there's a need in a community, people in Lancaster and Fairfield County, they always, always show up. Always step up always step up. That's one of the things that I personally love most about our community is the support. Wherever there's a need, people are there. How can I help you? What can I do? Um, let's make this better. It, it, it's just so heartwarming. I, I'm so proud to be a part of this community and a part of this board because we are making differences um, in our seniors' lives. And, you know, it's sometimes you think about a senior being in their home all alone. 
we try to make that better. They're not alone. We, they have a friend that comes and visits them, that brings them a meal, that will sit and talk with them and, and share stories with them. And that means so much to those people. Um, so very, very proud to be a part of this. And Anna, I don't know if you'd ever thought you'd be to this moment from where it was when you started and, and you've been through so much changes, uh, so many transformations and evolving and things growing and now here you are with a brand new facility, uh, kicking it off this weekend, uh, the grand opening. Uh, really the size you need with, with, the, with the ability to grow if you even need to grow further and, and we know you will because we're not at the end here, it's getting bigger. But uh, again, for the Meals on Wheels program, this is a pretty much a dream come through for this. It is, and you know, we started the Step Up to the com uh, Plate campaign, our capital campaign back in August of uh, 2017. And just to put that call to action out, like Krista said, you know, we said we, we just need you to step up to the plate and help us get here, and our community did just that. They've stepped up, and um, it's just unreal that it's we're finally here. And it's been a big transition for our staff. Sure. Uh, it's been a transition for our uh, diners that come in and see us. And, uh, that we get about 150 to 100 that people right? that come in to eat. And uh, it's just been amazing that, that they've had this experience. And just better things are yet to come, as I said, as we open up the activity rooms and start engaging our seniors in daily activities uh, that keep them busy and keep them socializing and connected. Well, it's this, it's this Friday evening from 5.30 to 8. The uh, ribbon cutting is at 6 o'clock with the chamber. That's when all the soiree kind of begins. But there will be a little uh, uh, meet and greet time, 5.30 before that, 5.30 to 8. And it's out at the uh, Meals on Wheels new facility out on Cedar Hill Road, what used to be uh, Cedar Heights School. Now it's Meals on Wheels building out there. Uh, it's going to be a fun evening, uh, be a little music, a little camaraderie, a little uh, companionship, a little just a nice time to really raise awareness for this. So it's, yes. uh, it's been a long time coming. It's going yeah. to be a fun day out there. Very excited. Sure. I want to thank Chris Moody, who's a board member out there, Anna Tobin, who's the executive director of Meals on Wheels. Uh, MOWFC.org is the website, more information there, but you can certainly just type in Meals on Wheels in Fairfield County and you'll find it. They've got a, they've got a lot of information on the website. So girls, thank you. Uh, best of luck. We're moving forward. Can't wait to have you back on and talk about how things continue okay. to grow out there in your new gig out there. It's going to be great fun. Thank, be great thank, fun. You. thank you. Thank you for joining us in Fairfield today. Interface Video presents Fairfield Today. Brought to you by Fairfield Federal Savings and Loan, Fairfield Medical Center, Fairhope Hospice and Palliative Care, the Fairfield County Board of Developmental Disabilities, and the Frankie Smith Funeral Home.